Hi guys, welcome back to another time lapse video. Uh, at this very moment, I'm actually applying paint by layers. Uh, these are two orchids, and they are made, of course, in watercolors. I'm using a paper called Bucking Forge. I'm in love with it. Perfect for sketching, for practicing. I am thrilled to present this painting. This one specifically was done in a dry to wet and wanting to wet, of course. And I just had fun painting it. It's something that I'm really, I feel like I'm really good at f making flowers and painting flowers. And so what better way than doing orchids, which to me is a very intricate, delicate flower. So you have to really get both um basically both of it both topics in it you have to really like get the beautiful delicate part into a painting and also you have to get the part where is actually a flower typically they're converted or i don't want to convert it because it's like computer stuff but they're basically males and it's a very interesting flower. I think it grows as a female and then it converts itself into, I don't know, something like that. All I know is that it's a very, very interesting flower. And it's usually uh, found on the tropics. So orchids are everywhere, especially where I came from. Um, I remember my mom used to have them. And a lot of people say, oh, put eyes on them and they really don't need but I think that by experience of what I've seen, people growing orchids specifically, especially with my mom, she used to have them always outside under something, of course, because they cannot go straight where the sun is. They like humid spaces where there's a lot of water running and it's like a humidifier type of, um, I guess that's how they like it. They like with a little bit of that little bit of moist in around so that's how they grow and they also back home they also grow um but not the big ones the big ones i believe they come from brazil but i'm not sure don't quote me on that i know that back home the little ones grow wild so everywhere you go if you go to the mountainside you can really see beautiful tiny orchids which is like really cool they come out wild and I just enjoy painting them. I am not sure if I'm having the right uh, name, but this looks like a tiger one. I'm not entirely sure. So again, don't quote me, I'm just painting. Um, and I, I find it very interesting, like I said. Um, it's a very intricate flower. A uh, very delicate flower not only to grow but also to paint and I thought you know in this case it's a really cool theme um, one thing though is that you can get lost on the details because it has so much details I mean the just just the middle side like right in the middle you see so much intricate design and you can get really lost in there so what I did was that instead of going one by one, even though I did, I did um, a lot of dots on the inside because the flower actually had it. I also went like I did the dots, and I also went with my brush around it, and I really didn't focus much on the detail. Even though I did, I did did the dots. I went back with the brush, and I kind of brush it, squinting my eyes to locate the the shadow, of course, and then I basically just run with my brush with my wet brush and just lightly just um erase some of that detail if you if you focus too much on the detail if you really go at it you will never it was just it will just look tacky so you have to be careful on how much detail can you put in another thing is that i started this painting by doing it um without no sketching because i already practice it 
long enough so I kind of already know the structure of an orchid but if you would like you can definitely start this with a pencil and you can study the flower because it's a very interesting flower like I said I always was I'm always interested in botanics and so every time I used to I used to buy so many botanical books um, which actually have like the best illustrations so if you really want to work if you really want to learn to do flowers and to paint flowers i really suggest you to get yourself a botanical book where you can see all kinds of beautiful flowers and plants that you can actually paint in water colors and also you can definitely learn from the illustrations on the books and i think that's um, the whole idea of of it of getting an illustration book with botanical art or botanical sketching or anything that has flowers in it because I think that flower is a very beautiful subject but it is um, quite if you don't if you focus too much on the detail like I said you can get lost on the on the detail and completely ruin your painting so you really have to be careful again um, what I did was the second part of or the second flower better say um, I did like a sort of like a I did the middle side, which is like my point of interest, very intricate. I had all almost the details in second part, which is on the right side of yours, my right side as well. I have more of a, I was a little bit less detailed, um, just marking in my shadows. Of course, you know, I wanted to get the anatomy, so to speak of the flower as much as I could. But I could I didn't really focus too much on the details. So I did that with the second flower. And of course, you know, as a watercolorist, I have to look at the light. And so I went on the right on the right side. I left that light just to sprout on because I just love that in watercolors, like you can do so much and you can really, really um, take advantage of that space or that light coming from so I definitely left the whole petal without no paint whatsoever and of course you know imaginary or imagining that the light is actually coming from the right side then I actually added another flower a semi in between big uh, basically about the same size as the other ones just a little bit but instead of putting it all together all facing uh, the viewer I actually went down with it and there's no detail whatsoever it's almost like a, almost like a coast of a flower you know you notice that something is in there but really it's just paint and that's what I've been doing or uh, that's what I did with this painting And for the last details, of course, I wanted to do like some droplets of water like coming out, like really not to be like, I feel like when you're so tight and you put so much, de so much detail on it, you can kind of just, it just, I don't know, like I want that feel of watercolor. So I like that running part of the water going through the paper. I don't want too much like, oh yeah, you know, this was very tight up painting I want it very loose and I like that loose uh, style what I did is that in each and every corner I drop off a tint of watercolor I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly but and then I let it run I added more water and I let it run and it just makes it really nice and of course after that I spread some watercolor of course protecting the flowers in the middle I wanted something very delicate and that's what you see me doing here well, I had a lot of fun and I hope that you guys enjoy watching the process. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me through here. And again, thank you so much for watching, for giving me some of your time. And I hope that you enjoy your day or night, whatever you are watching. Thank you. Again, you can also uh, definitely visit me on Twitter. This is where I post actually live demos of these flowers. You can see the full demo on Periscope. My name in Twitter will be at Vargas Art Studio and I'll see you on the next time and thank you again. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful evening. See ya. Bye-bye. Hi guys, I'm sorry. I thought I was done.
on the second recording. Um, actually, what I'm looking for, and you see me like going crazy because, of course, my organization and skills are still improving, is that I'm looking for a very, very tiny detail brush. And the reason that I do this is because I'm actually detailing the corners, or better say, outlining the corners. And this is done so it looks a little bit more realistic. And it just lifts off because um, when you're applying dark and you leave a space and then you have light, you definitely have to bring forward the watercolor. So by outlining that, you're, it's, like, it's like a 3D effect of some sort. So that's what we're doing. I outline in a very thin way, almost like you really have to look at it. Other than that, you won't know that it's actually outlined. And um, I really like to be a little bit more precise, but specifically with flowers. So I went ahead and I expanded a little bit more the petal because I thought it was just too round on that tip. And I like my like the flowers. I'm a bit picky with them. I like to really twig twig here and there. I really love plants. I'm planning to grow more plants in my house. And I feel like I have a connection with nature and I really love to not only plant, but I love to see them grow. So I really love botanical art, like I was saying. And so I really like to get every single detail, even though I am not too picky with the details. So right now, that's what you see me doing. That brush is going all over the corners that I kind of left out. I also have a thing, I don't know, it's just my thing is, is, is me being anal and all, of course, um, is that I tend to not only go um, all over the painting and just make sure that whatever white that I left, it was purposely left. It's just not there just cause, is is there for a purpose. So... The white that I leave is purposely left there. And whatever little stops uh, that I see on the paper, I kind of just go around it and paint them. And I, I just like to do that. It looks more professional. And it looks like you really dedicated your time and effort into your painting. So I think that that's one of the reasons that I like to do that. Always attention to detail is a big part. I feel like when you're painting is a big deal, even though sometimes when you're sketching and when you're just practicing, you could be a little sloppy to just practicing. But with this theme and specifically flowers, I just like to be a little bit more precise and I really enjoy doing that. I don't have and I don't mind whatsoever when I get into details with flowers. And I think it's the only subject that I can really go on, that and birds, of course. So I'm just enjoying, you know, the little time that I have. And I don't really know what I was looking for, but I think, oh yeah, a pencil. So here it is, I'm just finalizing my painting, signature and all. And I show it to the camera. And uh, thank you so, so very much for watching this time is the last recording and again thank you for your time and i really really hope to see you on the next painting and definitely that you have uh yeah learned something see you later bye bye